Hello and welcome to this update with the Australia-UK Chamber of Commerce on the Australia-UK Free Trade Agreement or FTA. I'm Jessica Sullivan, the Chamber's Member Engagement and Projects Manager, and in this video we'll be breaking down everything you need to know about the FTA. This video is part of the Chamber's Access UK series, held in partnership with the New South Wales Government and focused on supporting New South Wales and Australian companies to understand and access market opportunities in the UK. On behalf of our Chamber and the New South Wales Government, I'm pleased to welcome all of the New South Wales companies tuning in today. In this video, I'll be joined in conversation with our Chamber's CEO, Catherine Wu, to discuss all that's happened on the FTA so far and what it means for businesses in New South Wales and Australia. First, however, I'm pleased to welcome Australian Minister for Trade, Tourism and Investment, the Honourable Dan Tian, to say a few words. Minister Tian has led Australia's trade division on pursuing and negotiating a free trade agreement with the UK, and we're delighted to have him join us with a special message on the FTA. Prime Ministers Morrison and Johnson agreed in principle to an Australia-UK free trade agreement, which will result in a significant strengthening of the enduring relationship between our two nations. Our free trade agreement will be ambitious and liberalising, reflecting both countries' commitment to free trade and its economic benefits. Under the agreement in principle, consumers in both countries will enjoy tariff-free products. All tariffs on Australian imports from the UK will be eliminated within five years, and 99% of Australian goods will enter the UK duty-free when the agreement enters into force. This is wonderful news for businesses and their customers. Our agreement in principle also seeks to enhance existing opportunities and create new opportunities in the areas of two-way investment, digital trade, financial and professional services, movement of people, government procurement and agriculture. The Australia-UK FTA will help drive business growth, job creation and innovation, and those things are critical to both countries. Both governments are working hard to finalise the agreement and bring it into force as quickly as possible. Our hope is to sign the final agreement in October this year. As Australian businesses operating in the UK, you will be perfectly placed to take advantage of the opportunities created by this agreement. I encourage you to do so. Thank you. Thank you, Minister Tian, and congratulations to you and the team on the excellent work undertaken on the FTA negotiations to date. And we look forward to welcoming a final agreement very soon. To discuss this in further detail, I'm delighted to welcome Australia UK Chamber of Commerce CEO, Catherine Wu. Welcome, Catherine. Hi, Jen. Well, we've just heard from Minister Tian on the free trade agreement in principle. What exactly is an agreement in principle? Yeah, great question. So the Free Trade Agreement Principle, or the AIP as we've come to call it, is a written commitment from both countries that sets out the framework for a final deal. Um, Text-wise, it's about 6,000 words in length, and it summarises the core elements of what will be the final agreement on areas like movement of goods, market access for services, movement of talent, cross-border investment, and digital trade. So it's basically a milestone towards the final text being agreed between both governments over the next couple of months. Thanks so much for that, Catherine. What parts of the AIP in particular stand out to you? So when people talk about free trade agreements, they tend to focus on the movement of goods. And that's definitely where a lot of the headlines in the UK and Australia have been focused on this debt deal, on the removal of tariffs, and quotas, particularly for agricultural goods. And as we've just heard from the Trade Minister, the news there for Australia is really positive. So from entry into force of the agreement, there's going to be full liberalisation of 99% of Australian goods going to the UK, with the exception of a few goods like beef and sheep meat, dairy, sugar, rice, where tariffs and quotas are going to be removed in stages over the next 10 years with some additional safeguarding built in. But in addition to those wins on tariffs and quotas, there are some other really big joint wins for Australian and British companies outlined in the AIP. So a big one, for instance, is the movement of people and talent, where we're going to see the reciprocal removal of economics needs testing for visas, 
we're going to see an expansion of youth mobility visas for those 35 and under. And we're also going to see a new class of innovation related visas. And another area that stands out to me is the expansion of digital trade, which is going to be supported by the freer flow of data. And finally, in the AIP, they announced a world first innovation chapter in the final agreement. And that's going to see Australia and the UK cooperate on emerging tech regulation and commercialization. And what I hope that that will mean is better and faster outcomes for innovative Aussie tech firms, including some of the excellent startups that we know hail from New South Wales and other states. Well, it sounds as though there are many promising opportunities for both nations by way of this agreement. Now that we have an AIP though, can you share with us what happens next and what's the timeline to a final deal? Yeah, so the negotiating teams have already commenced converting the AIP into the final text of what will be the full agreement. So the teams work by chapter, so each, each chapter's text will at the moment be being tabled, agreed and then closed. And then when we have the full final text and the market access schedules, there's typically a legal scrub that's done by both sides before it's then submitted for signature by the trade or prime minister and then ratification by both parliaments. So in terms of timeline, as we just heard from the trade minister, we hope the deal will be signed imminently and perhaps it will be in October. And from there, each government has a different ratification process and timeline. But barring any issues, I would expect implementation to happen in mid 2022. But then, of course, it's uh, the point at which the deal needs to transition from being a really well crafted piece of policy into something that is genuinely useful for both Australian and British companies. And we look forward to that stage as well. Most definitely. There's no doubt Minister T and along with his team and uh, UK counterparts have much to do to finalise the agreement and will be very busy over the coming months. <laughs> what do you think the final FTA will look like and where are the biggest and most exciting potential opportunities? Mm, yeah, so based on what we've seen so far, this FTA is set to be a really comprehensive one. And in fact, I think it will be the most ambitious one outside of the agreement that Australia has with New Zealand, particularly in relation to the movement of talent and also regulatory cooperation. So as part of the FTA coming into force, both countries will set up several joint committees and working groups on areas like movement in goods and also strategic innovation. And I think what that means is that this FTA won't be an end point, but rather a launch pad for future growth and innovation between the two countries. In terms of the biggest opportunities for New South Wales and Australian companies, it is really hard to go past the tariffs and quota elimination on Australian goods, which is going to make the UK a really competitive end market for some of the amazing produce that we grow and make in Australia, like wine, like sugar, um, and also processed and manufactured goods. But I'm also really excited about the digital trade provisions, which are going to provide more opportunity for cross-border transacting and documentation to happen online. As you know, since COVID, we've seen a lot of the business cycle go online. And so having a trade framework that really supports that and allows businesses to transact and do their documentation digitally is going to really increase the ease of business between Australia and the UK, particularly given they are geographically very distant. Um, I think the other area that's worth noting is government procurement. So we don't have a lot of detail on this yet, but what we do have from the AIP indicates that there are going to be some very ambitious precedent setting uh, terms set between both governments in relation to allowing companies from each market access to the other's procurement systems. And so this could represent a really huge expansion of the markets wherein Australian companies who already participate in Australia's procurement systems are able to compete. Well, let's drill down a little further for our New South Wales and Australian audience. Uh, what will an FTA mean practically for New South Wales and Australian companies? Yeah, great question. So it is a little early to say fully because we don't yet have the full deal and the devil is always in the detail. But based on what we've seen from the agreement in principle, I'm really hopeful that this FTA will have three big practical implications for Australian and New South Wales companies. 
So firstly, less cost, very important one. So because we won't have tariffs and quotas, um, particularly over that, that 10 year staging period, companies will be able to set much more competitive pricing options into the UK, and that's gonna mean less cost for them overall. Secondly, easier access to talent. So with people able to move more easily between Australia and the UK with an expansion of visa options and opportunities, it's going to be much easier for Australian companies to access and import the international talent they need from the UK. And finally, um, thirdly, I think less red tape for Australian companies who are looking to scale into the UK market. And that reduction of regulatory complexity is going to be accompanied by greater regulatory cooperation, um, particularly in areas like tech. Um, so I think that's going to be really meaningful for companies in emerging tech areas, startups and scale ups who want to come into the UK market, but aren't necessarily able to fulfill very onerous compliance. And this, this is a sort of opening up of the market that I think we've already begun to see with things like the establishment of the fintech and space bridges between the UK and Australia, which I hope will only be built on through the FTA in emerging areas like health, edtech or AI. Well, I'm sure there'll be a, a well, warm reception to those opportunities and we look forward to seeing businesses take advantage of the FTA in the years to come. How can New South Wales and Australian companies get involved in the S FTA process from here on out? Yeah, so first of all, I would recommend those companies to hop online. So both the UK and Australian governments have great online resources. So in Australia, you can go to the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade or DFAT's website and connect with their negotiating division there. Um, in the UK, you can connect with the Department for International Trade and their negotiating team there to make your views heard. Alternatively, you can also work, or in addition to, you can also work with our chamber. So we have been in regular dialogue with both governments since before negotiating began, and that's going to continue beyond the final deal and into the implementation period. And once we have the full agreement, we're going to be really focused on how we do work to inform companies about what the FTA means for them, and particularly what it means for them based on their size and their sector and their market objectives. And we're really looking forward to working with our members, with industry bodies like ourselves, and also with partners like the New South Wales government over that time to help the FTA come to life and make sure that it's as inclusive and well utilised as possible. Well, many thanks for joining me for this discussion, Catherine. We look forward thanks, to Catherine. continuing to we well we look forward to continuing to track the progress of the FTA and working with Australian and British businesses to capture opportunities that we've discussed today. Thanks again to the New South Wales government for working with us on this series. In closing this session, I am pleased to pass the screen to Kira Smith of the New South Wales government for a final message. Thank you. Look, today I'm just here on behalf of the New South Wales government. Uh, to say a big thank you to the Chamber and our fabulous speakers for putting on this important event around the Free Trade Agreement. The Australian-UK Free Trade Agreement really marks a milestone in the Australian-UK business relationship. And I look forward to many discussions on this topic to really um, showcase the opportunities there are for businesses and industries and uh, to hopefully strengthen these ties.